Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's a surprisingly funny comedy that came out on June 17 of this year, and it's from the same director who gave us Dodgeball, The Underdog Story, and Were the Millers, called Central Intelligence. A story about two old high school friends they teamed up to save the country, although one of them works for the CIA. It stars Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock, Kevin Hart, Amy Ryan, Aaron Paul, Danelle Nicolette, Timothy John Smith, Megan Park, with Jason Bateman, and an uncredited cameo appearance by Marissa McCarthy. It's written by Ike Berholtz, David Stanson, and co-written and directed by Watson Marshall Ferber. The movie begins set in 1996, where we meet an extremely popular student and star athlete, Calvin Joyner, who's played by Kevin Hart, nicknamed the Golden Jet, is being honored at his high school senior pep rally. His best friend, who's obese, named Robbie Wurdeck, who's played by Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, who was in the shower singing the song by In Vogue, uh, My Loving, But You're Never Gonna Get It. Yeah, I love that song, by the way. That's very good that they throw in a classic 90s song in the mix, even though that song came out in 1992. Anyway, he was being bullied by a student named Trevor, who would later be played by Jason uh, Bateman, while he was showering in the boys' locker room. So Robbie is already being thrown in the gym naked by Trevor and his friends just as Calvin was just about to receive the award. And then everyone in the entire uh, gym had laughed except for Calvin and his girlfriend Maggie Johnson um, who was played by Danielle Nicolette. So Calvin takes off his varsity jacket and gives it to Robbie, who covers himself up, but suddenly runs away in embarrassment. Twenty years later, Calvin is being married to Maggie and works as an accountant, but he's very dissatisfied with his career, and already Maggie had offered him to sign up for, for a twenty-year reunion at high school but he refused to go because he doesn't want to get into the embarrassment that he uh, pretending like he just wanted to do what he wanted to do and not have to talk about how he's an accountant or anything like that. I mean, yeah, because he, he wants to be safe. So anyway, and not only that though, but they're already having marriage problems, so she suggested that they could see a therapist to, to say, you know, to save their time. But then at work, Calvin receives a friend request on Facebook because even though he declined on going to the the 20 year high school reunion, um, he just found out that there's a man named Bob Stone who just added him on his account. But it turns out that it really was Robbie. So he requests that they meet at the bar just to have a couple of drinks and get to meet each other. But then when Cal so Calvin, because Calvin was also going to have plans to, to have uh, dinner with uh, his wife, but he decided to make plans and, and went to the bar anyway. Calvin was very shocked to see that Robbie turns out to be, as we speak, a tall, muscular, confident man. So, so he lost a lot of weight uh, ever since that incident happened. So. But therefore, you know, they were just talking about what they were doing. You know, they started throwing some corny jokes here and there. Yeah. And then suddenly, suddenly uh, Robbie was just about, but suddenly Robbie who was just about to, you know, go to a restroom or just get some more drinks or so. Um, a group of four men was about to take over um, 
Robbie's seat, and Calvin was just trying to, to tell them that someone was sitting there. So then when Robbie finally showed up, he actually defeat all of them <laughs> completely. Yeah, and I know there was one girl in, in the movie which apparently, you know, he's, he started to love uh, Robbie. Yeah, you could tell, you know, she was flirting with him. Yeah, because also Robbie was wearing a, a unicorn shirt. Yeah, basically uh, something out of My Little Pony. <laughs> Well, yeah, because he's he loves the uh, unicorns. Um, yeah, and suddenly she also says this corny line. God, I hope he's Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I know. I it, it's it's it, interesting, but I didn't think <laughs> that was actually gonna be said in the movie. So then, uh, Bobby drops uh, Calvin off at his house. And ask Calvin to to review a few counting records, uh, saying that he has a payroll issue that's that he was that's on his computer. And apparently, by accident, uh, uh, Robbie had dropped some coffee. And, no, sorry, Robbie dropped some. Uh, I mean, Robbie just uh, accidentally dropped a drink inside his laptop. And, so it started to get my function for a while. So, but he wanted to avoid uh, Calvin's questions. So, about what's going on, and then he ends up spending the night on his couch. So the next morning, while well, since he's basically a fan of, of movies like like Sixteen Candles, because he was actually watching it uh, on TV while he was wearing his uh, small pajamas that Calvin wears. Suddenly, a group of CIA agents that's led by Pamela Harris, who's played by Amy Ryan, who arrived at Calvin's house and searching for, for Robbie. But Pam warns Calvin that Bob is actually a dangerous rogue agent, whose attention to selling satellite codes to the highest bidder. So the CIA agents follow Calvin to his office, but Robbie successfully abducts Calvin by explaining that he's trying to stop a criminal known as the Black Badger from selling those cell like codes. But he needs Calvin's skills to as a to use as a forcenic accountant to find the coordinates of the deal's location. But they're already being attacked by a bounty hunter, which um, suddenly Calvin flees and he calls uh, Maggie to see if, if, if she's okay. But then they wound up going to the therapist anyway, and that's when we found out. About <laughs> and and this is a funny moment too in the movie where, um, where Robbie was dressed up as uh, a psychiatrist, uh, just telling him to uh, do exactly what he has to do, and pretending that you know that he's uh, his wife Maggie and. And he needs to uh, focus on it, and <laughs> and they're like slapping each other. At this rate, he was slapping Calvin, and then <laughs> telling him to stop it, and then and he slaps him back. And all. Not to mention, he even holds him too. <laughs> I'm sorry, just it's just so funny. So after all this had happened during the marriage counseling. Robbie had convinced Calvin to help him, so Calvin sets up to meet uh, Trevor so they can obtain the counting number that reveals the deal's location. But of course, Trevor, who at the time had made fun of um, Robbie, you know, because remember that incident that happened, I mean, he was also trying to apologize uh, to Robbie and Calvin, but unfortunately, you know, he was acting like a jerk again. Robbie just uh, looked at himself uh, as he was uh, back then, you know, when he was fat. So he wasn't going to deal with that. But but then Calvin decided to just um, decided to just uh, make fun of him by just going into the, the glass uh, door and <laughs> 
Yeah, messing it up. So as they left the building, Pam actually calls Calvin to friend to arrest Maggie if he fails to help them detain their Robbie. So they forced. So apparently Calvin was being forced to betray um, Robbie, and CAA of course arrest him, which Pam actually tortures uh, Robbie by actually uh, getting him to confess. But when they finally escape. You know, they, they trap, trap Pam, and then Robbie and Calvin had escaped inside uh, a jet, and and they went all the way to Boston just just to uh, go inside uh, an underground parking garage just to find out the codes, and just to find out uh, who the Black Badger is. Even though Calvin thought that Pamela was the Black Badger, it turned out to be... Um, uh, Robbie's friend, who's the villain in this, named Phil Stadden, who thought he was dead, and he's played by Aaron Paul. So he turned out to be the Black Badger all this time. So this is where they had a shootout, and Robbie had knocked uh, Phil out. I mean, even though Calvin was was definitely trying to beat him on his game, yeah, because even he was trying to do that backflip like he did um, back in high school because that's why he's called himself the Golden Jet <laughs> but of course uh, e even early in the film though yeah even he had trouble uh, doing the backflip with him so he keeps hurting himself when, when he did that because that, that also happened uh, when he was uh, going to uh, his old high school with uh, Robbie to, to look at all of his uh, his uh, trophies, uh, pictures, and even has uh, a girlfriend who's, uh, yeah, Robbie's girlfriend actually, um, in there as well. So, there you go. <laughs> so, after all of this had happened, yeah, every, everything's safe, and they finally went to their 20 year high school reunion where, where Robbie finally gets the punch. Uh, Trevor in the face since he couldn't do that uh, in, the, in his office. Yeah, and all the codes uh, that has already been delivered to Pam yeah, before they went. So now Robbie finally um, reveals himself as it is because even though his nickname is Bob Stone <laughs> yeah, he takes off his shirts and his pants and yep and then he finally gets to see uh, his girlfriend Darla all grown up and yep he's, he's played by uh, Lewis McCarthy so everything turns out okay so so they even share a kiss and it was perfect it was actually the best uh, high school reunion that both Calvin and and Robbie had ever had. And yeah, this movie really caught me by surprise. I really enjoyed it. And I mean, this is definitely um, a great comedy that I didn't expect it to enjoy, but I'm glad it turned out to be a lot better than I thought when I saw the trailers of this. And I thought, wow, this could be interesting. Because uh, Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock, um, had done comedies like this before. He did uh, The Rundown. Get Smart, uh, The Other Guys, um, and of course The Game Plan, so this is interesting that he got to do a different comedy where he's actually, uh, now uh, he, isn't, he isn't just tough, but he's now uh, a very likable guy. He's very confident, and he's like, you know, he, he's really a, a happy-go-lucky type of guy who's just, you just want to love him. I mean, he's like a teddy bear, <laughs> in that sort of way. And you got Kevin Hart in the movie. He wasn't his obnoxious self like he was in the Ride Along movies, especially the sequel, which was horrible. But I got to admit, the first movie, which is not a masterpiece, uh, did have a couple laughs that I did enjoy. I mean, mostly to see him you know, act like this, but but I agree, it wasn't the best movie that I ever saw, but still. 
But he had terrific chemistry with The Rock, and I'm amazed. And this is definitely the movie that Ride Along 2 should have been in the first place. You know, same goes with Ride Along. And I'm glad that this, this actually worked. And it's interesting that um, even though he played a man who was uh, obese, who was morbidly obese, and he, get, he gets picked on by bullies, which I know that sucks, that suddenly he grows up to become a tall, muscular man working for the CIA. Which I know they thought that he was basically a dangerous rogue agent, but te technically speaking, I mean, this was, it was just part of his job. You know, to, uh, to stop the, the Black Badger. And you got Kevin Hart uh, as um, an accountant, you know, who started out as a, uh, a popular student and a star athlete, known as the Golden Jet, where he does all the backflips. It's interesting that um, suddenly, even though he <laughs> he's always getting treated like this, I mean, because I have to admit, even he gets treated like crap too at, at his office. I mean, he has a I mean, he has, uh, he also has uh, a partner who acts like a, a complete idiot. And I, I, I love the scene where uh, where Amy Ryan, who plays uh, Pamela Harris, the CIA agent, who actually uses the, the stun gun on him. You know, just, just when they're about to look for you know, Robbie, who's hiding out, and... And I know there was a scene where, where Robbie had put uh, Calvin inside the, the laundry uh, drawer, and, and then, or at this rate, uh, or, or at this rate, the, the mail slot, you know, where they put all the mail and all this other stuff in there. And it just throws him all the way out of, out of the window, and he jumps to with them, and then they land into a. Uh, they land into a uh, a balloon mascot and until um, until Rob ha until Robbie had stole the car um, until Robbie had stole an SUV and they're driving around to escape just to find uh, what's really going on. Yeah, <laughs> funny. Yeah, there were a lot of corny jokes in the movie, like I mentioned uh, before. Like, I know they they throw in some celebrity jokes here and there. You know, like, for instance, I, I know they they actually mentioned uh, that uh, Calvin looks like Taylor Swift. Uh, I don't even know if Taylor would actually enjoy that, but <laughs> we'll get the idea. And I, I also know that, and then Robbie, of course, you know, is a big fan of of unicorns, you know, that's why he wore his shirt, and plus, you know, he loves um, uh, the movie Sixteen Candles, a classic John Hughes uh, classic, and he also loves uh, that Patrick Swayze uh, film Roadhouse, because <laughs> that's where they brought in that line in the movie. <laughs> oh boy. It, it I mean, it really did caught me by surprise, and and Watson uh, Marshall Ferber definitely knows how to do comedies like this, because he's a very talented writer and director, um, and I'm 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 just amazed that he could do anything, no matter how how much his comedy was going to turn out to be. So, yeah, I mean, I swear to God, Tim Story should definitely learn a lesson from from Robert. You know, definitely. Uh, Tim Sawyer should definitely do something that Watson Marshall Ferber had done when he does comedies because, yeah, just come, just have a cast like The Rock, uh, Kevin Hart, or even other actors like uh, Ben Stiller, you know, as well as Jason Bateman, or or even stars like uh, Jennifer Aniston that you can do comedies like this and just make it smart and funny. And, yeah, and just be just be ridiculous I mean, in, in a good way uh, for, for all the action that they're going for and all the fun and silliness that they have to go for so it works and it shows and I'm just glad 
And I gotta say, they bo both The Rock and and Hart actually have uh, terrific chemistry together. It really shows. And it's great to see that, too. Um, and besides, I, I do enjoy Kevin Hart and, and some movies that he's in. Um, and, and he's a great comedian, too. I mean, I, I know he's been in bad films before, too. He, even way before Ride Along 2. Um, such as uh, Soul Plane, for instance. Yeah. Sure, sure people wouldn't even remember that one, but there you go. And I know The Rock's been in some bad films. In fact, recently he was in uh, San Andreas. And that was a terrible film. But at least he was good in it. Yeah. Um, and it's also a great cast, too, with um, you know, Amy Ryan you know, playing the CIA agent Pamela Harris. So this is really something, because at times I thought she was just going to be the villain in this movie, too. Yeah. Even Calvin actually found out about that, too, when... That they, you know, he, he thought that she was going to be the black uh, badger, uh, but he wasn't. So interesting. And um, yeah, it has a great cast in this movie, and I, I'm glad this movie turned out to be a lot funnier than I expected. And it's good to see that this movie was a success. Um, out of its 50 million budget that this movie had, it made like only. 195 million worldwide. So yeah, this was this was a modest hit. Came out uh, at the same time as uh, Finding Dory did, which I need to check that movie out too. So, anyway, um, check out Central Intelligence. It's a very funny comedy. It's worth your time. So anyway, I give the film Central Intelligence three and a half stars. I'm Joseph Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.